Let's write the formula for calcium phosphate. What are the things you have to know to write the formula for this compound? We first need to recognize that it is an ionic compound. How do we know it's an ionic compound? Well, it's made up of a metal, calcium, and a polyatomic ion, phosphate. You just have to memorize that when you see phosphate, you're probably dealing with an ionic compound. Calcium, we have to know its symbol. We have to memorize that or look it up on the periodic table. We also have to know the charge on the calcium ion. So we refer to the periodic table. We see that calcium is in column two. There's a symbol. There's column two. You have to remember that any element in column two, when it forms an ion, will form an ion with a plus two charge. As you probably know, it's losing its outer two electrons to get to that stable noble gas configuration. In this case, argon. But anyway, calcium is going to form a plus two ion, just as beryllium and magnesium, strontium, barium, and radium will. Calcium is plus two. And phosphate. How do we know what the formula for the phosphate polyatomic ion is? You probably have a chart and somewhere in your chemistry book or your teacher has given you one containing numerous polyatomic ions. These that are on the screen are probably the most famous ones that you'll see over and over and over again. Of course phosphate is on the bottom of the list and it's formed as PO4 minus 3. So you just have to memorize that. No way around it. So, what is really happening is that when calcium forms an ion, it will lose two electrons, forming a plus two charge, and phosphate will gain three electrons, forming a minus three charge. The number of electrons lost has to equal the number of electrons gained in any ionic compound. We can see if this loses two and this gains three, there's a mismatch. So we have to be creative in learning how to write the formulas for ionic compounds. So let's show you how I learned how to write the formula for calcium phosphate a long time ago. Let's put down the calcium, but now I'm gonna put down a plus one and another plus one which of course would add up to equaling plus two. The phosphate I'm going to do very in a similar fashion, but I'll put minus one and minus one and minus one. So what has happened on the calcium, one electron leaves, it would give calcium a plus one charge, and if phosphate were to gain one electron, it would have a minus one charge. So the plus one and the minus one indicate that electron leaves calcium and goes to phosphate. Or in other words, the plus one equal plus or minus one equals zero. And in any ionic compound, we want all the charges to add up to equal zero. We have another electron that left, and if it went over here, it would give that phosphate a negative one charge. So we have the plus one and this plus one taken care of, this minus one, this minus one taken care of, we have a neg another negative one charge. Another ne uh, electron has come from somewhere. We'll need another calcium ion. Well, each one has a plus two charge. So this electron left and went over here to the phosphate. But now we have another positive charge that has to be balanced by another negative charge. So we'll write down another PO4. And put down minus one and minus one and minus one. So we can draw a line to connect again. So that plus one an electron leaves and it comes over to the phosphate. But now we have two more negative charges. Two more electrons have to come from somewhere and I think you're ahead of me. We're now gonna put down another calcium ion with a plus one and a plus one. And we see this plus one can pair up with that minus one. This plus one can pair up with that minus one. So what has happened? We have six positive charges, and now we have six negative charges, and all the charges add up to equal zero. We call six plus, plus one, 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 plus one
plus 6 minus equals 0. So this would be the formula for calcium phosphate when we write it in the correct form. What of course has happened is that three calcium ions have lost a total of six electrons and two phosphate polyatomic ions have gained a total of six electrons. So we have three calciums, we have two phosphate polyatomic ions. So to write the formula, we do calcium, we put a little three for the three calcium ions. We write our PO4, and beside of it as a subscript, we'll put two. But if we don't do something around the PO4 to indicate that there are two phosphate polyatomic ions, it would look like we had 42 oxygen atoms. So chemists use a parenthesis. And the way we read this is we say calcium, we say for calcium phosphate, we say CA3PO4 taken twice. That's how you would read that to a chemist. Now that's a long way, but to solve this problem, but it shows you the, the chemistry that's going on in the compound. Calcium loses electrons, the phosphate polytom ion has gained electrons. Cal the three calcium lose a total of two apiece for a loss of a total of six. The phosphate each gains three. Since there are two of them, they gain six. So everything adds up to zero. All the electrons have been moved and shifted accordingly. Now there's a lot quicker way to write this that um, you're going to love. Let me explain that to you. You still have to remember that calcium is a plus two ion and that phosphate is a minus three ion. You can cross these um, charges. The two would come the bottom of the phosphate and the three will go to the bottom of the calcium. So we have Ca3 PO4 taken twice and that's the quick way to solve the formula for calcium phosphate.